Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be taking Photoshop seamless patterns and converting them into Illustrator pattern swatches. So you can begin using your patterns that you've created in Photoshop. Say you created the watercolor seamless texture pattern that we created a couple weeks ago, which I will link to if you wanna check out that tutorial. Say we've got it and we're using it in Photoshop and we love it, but we need to use it in Illustrator as well. I'm going to show you exactly how to take that pattern and use it exactly the same way, only having it in Illustrator. So I'll give you an example. So as you see on screen, we've got some text and if I double click, I can bring up my layer styles, I can choose pattern overlay and I can choose some watercolor textures. So this font is called Tuesday Script. It was created by me and these textures right here, the watercolor pattern textures are part of my watercolor texture kit volume three so you can see they're all seamless i can reduce the scale of them and kind of toggle all over the place pretty good effects and then i've also got some foil textures right here these are from the glitz and glam kit we've got glitter and foil silver we've even got black textures so these work really well in Photoshop, but now we want them to work in Illustrator. So I'll show you what I've already done. If I jump into Illustrator, you can see now I've got these pattern swatches over here so I can take my regular text and then we're gonna be able to apply patterns like the foil and the watercolor. And if that scale seems too big to you, I'm also going to share how you can reduce the scale and not affect your typography at all. So this is a really handy tool to have because patterns make design life so much easier because you can apply them in just a click of a mouse, literally. So we're gonna hop back into Photoshop and we're just gonna get started. So I'm gonna turn off my text right here and I'm gonna double click on my bottom layer. This is just a random um, Photoshop file. It's eight and a half by 11, but that doesn't even really matter. It's RGB, which does matter because if I come over here to pattern overlay and I choose one of my patterns, like say I wanna use this green pattern right here, this is the most important part. When you hover over, you can see it says 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. That is the original size that that pattern was created at. And you have to remember that, otherwise this won't work. So all you have to do to figure that out, you just simply hover over the texture that you wanna make or use. This one says 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels and it was created in RGB color mode. So the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new document, file new. I'm gonna make it 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. And I'm gonna keep it at a resolution of 300 just so it's super high res. And I'm using a color mode of RGB just because it's far more vibrant on screen, especially for a tutorial. So if you wanna use this for print because Illustrator is very often used for print documents, um, you're gonna to wanna to change this to CMYK if you wanna use your pattern for print. Super important, this is when you need to make that color mode change. If you're gonna use RGB, Illustrator uses a CMY color mode by default, so I'll show you how to change that if you wanna change it to RGB ever, but by default, it's gonna be CMYK. All right, so I'm using RGB because it's gonna look really vibrant on screen for you. So I'm gonna hit okay. We've got 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. I'm gonna double click on the background layer to unlock it. I'm gonna double click one more time to bring up my layer styles. And then I'm gonna click on pattern overlay. And this brings up all of my patterns once again. And I'm gonna choose this green pattern because that's the one I wanna use in Illustrator. Next, I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is at 100% and my scale is at 100%. This part is super important, so don't forget it. All right, so once you have 100% opacity, 100% scale, hit OK. And now we're gonna save it as a high-res JPEG. So you're just gonna go File, Save As, and you're going to choose where you wanna save it. I'm gonna call this one green, and I'm gonna save it as a file format of a JPEG and hit save. And I'm just gonna make sure my quality is all the way up to 12 maximum, hit okay. Now we've got it saved. So while we're still in Photoshop, let's grab another texture so we can do two at one time. So I'm gonna hop back over here, my original document, double click, check my pattern overlay. And this time I wanna use this gold glitter. So I'm gonna hover over it and it says 750 by 750. So now that I have that information, I can create a new document, file new, 750 pixels by 750 pixels. I'm gonna keep it RGB one more time. Resolution 300, keeping it super high res, hit okay. Double click on my background layer to unlock it. Double click one more time to bring up my layer styles, choose pattern overlay, navigate to the glitter. And I wanna make sure one more time, my opacity is at 100%, scale's at 100%, hit okay. And now we're gonna save file, save as, and I'm gonna call this glitter. 
and make sure you just save it as a JPEG, not a PSD. Hit save, quality's all the way up to 12, hit okay. All right, now we're gonna pop into Illustrator. So I'm gonna create a new document just so we're starting from scratch, file new. I'm gonna keep mine eight and a half by 11, doesn't really matter. Um, just use the document size that you need to use for your document. Okay, so down here it says advanced. Since I created my patterns in RGB color mode, I need to change this to RGB for me. If you converted your patterns to CMYK, make sure this says CMYK right here. Remember, RGB is for on-screen usage. CMYK is whenever you're printing. I'm keeping my raster effects, which is another way of saying resolution, at 300 PPI, which is the standard print resolution, and I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so let me type out Tuesday right here so we can use it as an example. Make this nice and big, change my text to Tuesday script. All right, so next we're gonna come into our swatches, and if you don't see swatches, you can get to it by going window swatches. And if you have a whole bunch of swatches like this, um, that usually happens by default, and if you don't want them all there, you just want the ones that you wanna use right there, you can easily get rid of them by toggling this little icon down and choosing select all unused, and then you can just drag them to the trash. There's usually some black and whites always left over, not really sure why that does it, but it does it every time. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is place our textures in here. So we're gonna go file, place, and we're gonna choose the green one first, the green watercolor. So I'm gonna place it in. The next thing you need to do, and you cannot forget this, otherwise it won't work, is you need to come over here and go Object Rasterize, and then hit OK. Once it's rasterized, you can literally just click on your texture and drag it into your swatches, and then you can just delete your texture. Now it's saved in our, text, in our swatches over here, so if I select my typography and then I click on the swatch, there we go, I've got it in here. So that's pretty nice. So we're gonna bring in the glitter next and then I'll show you how to scale that texture down so it looks exactly how you want it. So we're gonna go file place, so we're gonna do the exact same thing we did once again just to reiterate everything. So I'm gonna choose my glitter this time, hit place. This time I'm, I'm gonna go object, rasterize, hit okay, drag it into my swatches and then I can delete my swatch or I can delete my texture that I just brought in. Okay, and then we can test it, select the type, click on the glitter, and that scale actually feels pretty nice. Um, okay, so let's select the watercolor and then just scale it down. So with it selected, you're gonna right click and choose transform scale. All right, so this is what you need to remember. When you've got this little uh, palette open right here, you're going to uncheck transform objects. This will make sure that your typography or your vector element or whatever you're applying your texture to does not also scale down or scale up. We're only transforming the patterns, so that's the only box that you want checked. Up here is the amount that you're going to either scale it up or scale it down. And we always wanna make sure that preview is checked so we can see what it's gonna look like. So this is before and this is after. And that actually looks really good. Let's see what 25 looks like, if that's too small or not. So I'm just gonna uncheck and then check again. That actually looks really good too. I think I'm gonna go with 25%. So that is all you have to do to scale the pattern down. If you wanna start all over again, just select it and then click on your swatch one more time and that'll go back to your default. So let's do the glitter just to reiterate everything. So with it selected, right click, transform, scale, and this is what 25% looks like right here, which I feel like is a little too small. So let's see what 50% looks like. We'll just check it and uncheck it. And that looks good too, but I think, let's do 75. I want it a little smaller, but not too much smaller. That feels really good. So I like that, I'm gonna hit okay. And now we're all set. So once again, this is the Tuesday script font. I'm using the glitter texture from the Glitz and Glam kit and the watercolor texture came from the watercolor texture kit volume three. I'll leave links to all of those in the video description if you wanna check out those any further. But that is how to create a Illustrator pattern swatch from a Photoshop pattern. So much easier than you might think. And now you can use all the patterns that you create in Photoshop in Illustrator as well, exactly like a pattern. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.